We've been paddling non-stop for the last 14 hours, racing down the Kennet and Avon Canal through Hungerford, Newbury and Reading. It's just gone midnight and we're now on the River Thames passing through Marlow. Oh my God, this is never ending. Yeah, I'm hurting. We've got many hours of paddling in the pitch black ahead of us. Dawn is a long way away and we're still having to get out and run around every lock. Mentally and physically tough now. I'm trying to hurt a lot through my back and through my forearm. And Steve announced to me that we're basically halfway there on distance, which is not fun. This is the graveyard shift, when exhaustion really kicks in. Overnight, a quarter of competitors will be forced to retire from the race. To stand any chance of finishing in less than 24 hours, we need to be at Teddington Lock at around 7 a.m. to coincide with high tide. Despite the pain, the chafing and the blisters, we're both keeping positive. There's a nice kind of, I don't know, sensation of just being totally alone. It's lovely. If Steve's saying it's lovely, then he needs to work harder. We oh, run, Steve. No, 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 it's better without We it. run. Yeah. I'm in a boat with a brilliant drill instructor, for goodness sake. Even in the earlier hours of the morning, there are plenty of cheering supporters keeping our spirits high. And of course, we couldn't do it without our dedicated support crew who have been keeping us on schedule and trying to make sure we keep our energy levels up. Yeah, it's tired now. I don't fancy a donut. Uh, have a sandwich, yeah. Ham thank you. When have I ever turned down a donut? This, this is doing weird things to me. Well. We've been battling to keep our boat afloat after putting a big hole in it just four hours in. It seems to be holding together, but I'm not so sure about Steve. He's got the world's worst case of nappy rash. He is. I understand why babies cry now. It's even having a strange effect on me. I'm a bit disorientated in the dark as to where we are and what time it is. And I, I'm just doing this really annoying thing of I keep on calculating how far we've got to go and it's still in the hours and hours and hours. <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning and I've got a boat that's held together with sticky tape. It's great. The boat's holding together, but we're falling apart. We've been paddling relentlessly for nearly 20 hours and fighting fatigue is now the real battle. Helen starts to hallucinate there's a boat tailing us and starts shouting to it. They're a metre behind us, Steve. Are they? Yeah. Is it right or left? There's no one behind us. Oh, f It was the moon, I thought it was the light. Right, which way? After 108 miles, we reach Teddington Lock, on time to catch high tide. The tidal flow should help us on the home straight towards the finish line at Westminster. I can tell Steve is suffering, but the clock is ticking, and I know we need to push on. This is not the time for sympathy. The harder you go, the less you'll feel the pain, Steve. I am never, <laughs> ever doing anything with you ever again. <laughs> Once on the Thames Tideway, we won't touch land until we finish. Any problems, and we're on our own. Oh, no. What? Cramp. Where? My legs. But ticking off the bridges and the landmarks of London... Hammersmith. ..gives us the kick we need to drive us to the finish. Come on, I can see the banner! <laughs> and just after Big Ben chimes nine o'clock, on a glorious Easter Sunday morning, we do it. It has been such an honour doing this with you, sweetheart. Out of the 157 pairs that started the race, 120 finished. But for us, it was the cheers from supporters, friends and family along the way that really pushed us on. And we thank you all.